how is it going guys drew peacock here back with another video and today we're looking not at some crappy cars for sale we're looking at some real builds some people who put their blood sweat and tears into their cars and they're trying to get out of it probably to move on to something bigger and better but but who knows maybe they got the missus pregnant and they just got to get out of the car scene either way we're looking at some sick builds from these guys and we'll see if they're worth the money. If you see any like this, send it to my Gmail, drewpeacock.clips.gmail.com. The super motor is currently being assembled. I have some stuff in the works for the Mustang, some crazy suspension coming. But we got to finish the uh, Supra and the uh, Civic first. So Mustang's a little bit, little bit out. Anyways, let's dive right in. First car, speaking of Mustangs, we have a 2002 Ford Mustang, $48,000. 40, $48,000 $48, for a 2002 Ford Mustang. Wow. It's a 2002 Saline or Saline Roadster. Tomato, tomato. I always said Saline. A lot of people get triggered and say, it's Saline. It fucking doesn't matter. Okay, you guys get what I'm saying. This one apparently makes 1,136 real wheel horsepower. Tomato, tomato. I don't care if it's fucking um, failing or something like that. Makes 1136 on E85 and methanol injection. How, what power plant, what motors underneath this hood, I need to know. The Salines always looked a little out there to me, especially this generation. It just always looked a little bit out there. A little bit too many gills on this car, you know? I do like the, the wide body flares. I don't know if that's something that comes from saline because I've never noticed it in the past, but at least on this color, it looks really like prominent and it looks sick. I like it. Front bumper looks like a shark. Underneath the hood, I think I see a four valve with a whipple on it. Hard to tell from here. We'll take a look in a second. Again, I don't know if that's just the Cobra R hood or if that is the saline hood. I haven't seen an, a new edge saline in years, so... I'm not out here beating my meat to these photos. I don't know what's factory and what's not on this particular one. I know they didn't come with 1,100 horsepower. I'll tell you that. O2 Saline Roadster with a nasty buy. All right. Already know that this is a boomer. He definitely does not beat on his car. So uh, the, we already know the motor is going to be sound. We have a red top. And uh, it looks like a four valve. He's got saline valve covers. It looks like a Whipple. I could be wrong. We'll have to read his description. I mean, I guess it would make sense that it's a saline blower, but I don't think that is. It doesn't look like a saline blower, but I could be wrong. Oh, Lambo doors. Lord have mercy. It looks like a full show car interior, though. Like, everything's been done up. The little wide body flares I do like. However, I don't think 1,100 horsepower is going to be hooking with those goddamn all seasons. I just, I don't see it happening unless those are 355s. And even then, it's not going to happen. But even if they are... It's not gonna happen yeah see this is the, like the cobra wing was already perfect and then celine went and made this abomination this master chief visor doesn't look good the wheels look fine i actually don't mind the wheels although they look like late 2013 wheels the interior god damn that is one steering wheel that you don't want to wrap with alcantara like that just looks like a pillow now that does not look good same with the dash and everything. It's just a little bit too much going on. Like, I had the same red stripping, although mine was blue, in my new edge. And it was from Wish.com. So, just a little bit too much going on on the inside. Looks like he's got some amps, probably a sub somewhere. Oh, it was a Whipple. Told you. I'd bet my bottom dollar on that one. Yeah, a whole lot of reservoirs. Looks very cluttered. Um, eight or ten ribs set up. I mean, again, it looks definitely capable. I know these four-valve motors are, are strong. They are very, very tough. I don't know if this was a Cobra. Does Saline take Cobras and turn them into Salines or what? Because there's a lot of Cobra badging everywhere. I know that's not OEM because I don't think Ford is dumb enough to put one right there. But is that what Saline does? Or do they take base two edge two edges, two valves, and turn those into Salines. I've never noticed a Cobra badging on them before. Like, I'm just going to type in 2002 Saline Mustang. And um, if there's a Cobra badge, I'll pull an iShow Speed right now. There is no Cobra badge. I am not pulling an iShow Speed right now. I will not show my meat. Yeah, see, no Cobra badges. So, so that badging is not factory. So he's putting Cobra badges on it. It makes 1,100 horsepower. Do we care at this point? I mean, a little 3M tape isn't going to hurt the next owner. $48,000? Uh, I don't know about that one, though. This is a very specific vehicle, and this is when you over-modify something to the point to where the market for it just becomes so small. Um, so like, like, take my Mustang, for example. 
Okay. Similar setup. We have a Whipple Coyote in an older Mustang with a lot less customization than this guy. This guy went above and beyond in the interior. He went above and beyond on the exterior. He went above and beyond with the doors. He went above and beyond with the styling kit. He has the drop top cover. Like he went above and beyond with everything. His market's getting a lot smaller where mine is just like, oh, you like S197 and you like horsepower? Here's the car for you. Oh, it's blue and it's got racing stripes. It's pretty basic compared to this. So 48,000 sounds a bit high. Now, supposedly only has 1,500 miles on it. I'm guessing that's on the build, which is good. But that also means that this thing hasn't been driven or really tested. And I don't want to be the one to find out how long that 1,100 horsepower is going to hook or last. So knock 10 to 15 off of that. I'd say 10, and maybe then it'd be okay. I don't know. Maybe these Celines are worth more than I think, but I don't think so. Anyways, moving on. I'd say that's a thumbs down in pricing. This one's sold, so the price must have been pretty good. 1996 Honda Civic, $18,000. Who knows what he actually got, but $18,000? Don't sound half bad. It's an EK hatch, clearly. And uh, we see a little, a little something sticking out of the bumper. We see a little intercooler, so it's pretty obvious that he's a ricer. No, I'm joking. It's pretty obvious that he's a turboed. We have bride seats or brid seats or go suck my ball seats. I hate how everyone's so anal about pronouncing shit. You guys get what I'm saying. He's on, um, what are they, VMS? VMS wheels, which are like the cheapest drag wheels you could buy. I mean, if you're doing a budget build, go for it. You know, I'd rather cheap out on the VMS wheels than cheap out on the race pack dash. I mean, that's money right there. That That is probably more expensive than his whole set of wheels. Not including tires, but still. His intercooler is also filling out that bumper real nice. We have a bumper exit. Looks like he's aired down 24-7, or he's got a nail in the tire. See, these these are much better. These look like CCWs. And then underneath the hood, you could see the B-Series with uh, the Ram intake or Ram exhaust manifold turbo setup. It's a B18C1 to be exact. I like the intercooler pipe being like, it looks nicely fabbed and everything. It doesn't look janky at all. So that's good. Like this looks like a solid setup. If you ask me, it looks solid. I mean, it honestly looks solid. The exterior looks clean. It doesn't look like it's been ran through. Um, the interior, I mean, from what we saw, looks pretty good. And underneath the hood looks pretty decent as well. And I mean, with the combination of just, well, it having a race pack. I mean, you already know that there's some good money in this car. How much power does it make? Does he say it? Let's 1200 horsepower capable holy fuck it's a four cylinder so that would be 300 horsepower per cylinder so let that sink in if this guy was misfiring on three cylinders and his car was somehow magically able to run and he was at max potential and there was no catastrophic failure that would be faster than still every other honda pretty much on the fucking road 1200 horsepower capable motherfucker um what does it make right now he's on hellcat pumps okay uh car made 871 at 37 pounds first time on dyno then the car was set down to 24 and it made 720 that's what my supra makes and this thing is like probably a thousand pounds lighter holy shit holy fucking shit is it all-wheel drive too i don't think so I don't, yeah, it doesn't know. GSR Trans, yeah, definitely not. Holy fucking shit. Like, I'm thinking in my head for my EG, 400, 450 is going to be more than enough. Like, I'm not even going to be able to hook. This motherfucker said, suck my balls, we're doubling that. Holy shit. Wow. Okay, well, I mean, I... My, my buddy, he has a, a, a K-series in an EG that makes similar power to that, and he plans on going for more so it's people honda people are crazy you find the right honda person and they're fucking crazy this guy's crazy but they sold it eighteen thousand dollars for 800 horsepower this will beat pretty much any car on the road jesus all right that good price good price right there i'd say that's good price moving on next car another one that sold 2005 xb scion i don't know why i read those in different order whatever ten thousand dollars sold scion xb ten thousand dollars what the frick is going on here this first wheel, this first photo might might give you a little hint. There's smoke coming out of the rear wheels, not the front. So what did they do to this fucking toaster? Well, they tossed in a built 355 with a TH400, 3200 stall. Yes, it's a rear wheel drive. 
Scion XB. There she is right there. Look at that cute little intake. I mean, I guess they got to do what they got to do. You know, the little vacuum cleaner intake will do. But, uh, yeah, a built 355 in a Scion XB. I've never liked these cars. But this might be the only one that I could see myself driving. Like, 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 take a look at this piece of shit. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a Scion XB. It looks like they used pretty much Amazon parts to get this thing tossed together. Like, the steering wheel is disgusting. The seats are disgusting. The harnesses are disgusting. Like, look at that steering wheel. What the fuck Chicky, Chuck E. Cheese Mickey Mouse steering wheel is that? That is disgusting. Look at the shifter. Like, this thing is as Amazon as it gets. Look at this thing. AutoZone, Amazon, sponsored by all these clowns. But it has a built 355 in it. So who the fuck are we to talk? Um, I really wonder what wheel and tire. He has a parachute on it as well. Holy shit. That is funny. I really want to see this thing go down a track. That'd be cool if it cut to a clip of it going down a track. This thing is its crazy. It's stupid, but it's crazy. Somebody took their mom's Scion XB and made it work. Does it have side exit exhaust? <laughs> that's hilarious okay that is funny if i saw a Scion xp pull up to the, the light and it's chopping i'd be kind of nervous i'd be a little nervous if it was chopping like that only ten thousand dollars too I, I mean you have to admit that they're probably in this thing a hell of a lot more i mean it's definitely like a janky junkyard tossed together like car but it's still probably a lot of fun to drive for what it is i mean you're driving around in a fucking box and it's now a rear-wheel drive V8 swapped box. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. Is it cool enough for, for, like, for like me to want to buy it? Probably not. If I'm being quite honest, it's probably a nightmare to own because uh, of what's been done. But um, would I drive it for a YouTube video now? Yeah, I'd probably do that. I'd, I'd probably definitely do that and probably shit my pants. Let's read his, uh, his description. Rear-wheel drive... It's a head turner. I drive it daily. 10K or best offer. No tire kickers or joyriders. This is a fast vehicle. This is probably the only time I've ever seen that in the description of an XB and kind of believed it. Inexperienced persons can get seriously hurt. Welcome to come and see it. Message me. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this is one of the few times that I actually believe somebody is saying that their Scion XB is probably pretty quick. It's cool for sure. It's weird, but it's cool. Next car, another car that's sold. All of these are sold. So either I got to them too late or they're just hot commodities. 1995 Honda Civic EX Coupe two-door, $45,000. Mother of God. I mean, I see a Turbo B series here, but Jesus, 45,000 smackaroonies? That's a whole lot of car. That's a whole lot of car. This thing better make some serious power. Serious power. All right. So... This first photo, we have a crazy fuel system here. Looks like external pumps, potentially. I mean, those are fuel filters over here, but they almost look like external pumps. Are there wires going? To, I mean, I see wires going to this thing over here. I also see a drive shaft. So it's all wheel drive. I love the little bumper cuts that fit so perfectly with the intercooler. That is so cool. I don't like the, the fucking open mouth. Eh, I don't like that with the with the front bumper. I'm not a fan of that, but it's definitely functional. That intercooler is getting as much airflow as possible. Hood exit, headlight delete. There's the engine bay. Um, this the splatter is a little bit 2016 for me. That's a little bit too you know 2000 teens. But uh, you know, suit yourself. Your car makes some serious power. I I could I could you know turn a blind eye to some ugly splatter paint on a valve cover i'm not really crying about that s1 built uh we have some nice suspension in the rear like i said all-wheel drive setup that yeah. so i'm betting that yeah these are external fuel pumps based on the fact that they had to ditch the factory fuel system they have to run two separate i don't know if they connect i know is 300s have a little um fucking hose that connects both sides but it looks like they don't and uh no they have to how the fuck would you fill it this is why I don't own an all-wheel drive Civic. Uh, this is the only reason. Uh, nothing about, about money or anything like that, obviously. Um, uh, no, well, that and it is expensive, actually, on hindsight. It is probably really expensive to do. But no, but seriously, all, all jokes aside, 
uh, yeah, how like it, there's a lot more involved than just oh go get a fucking CRV diff and fucking blah 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 blah. It's a it's a lot more involved. It's not that simple. But yeah, I, how do you fill the tanks? Whatever. Uh, let's just move on. Six suspension. We got some billet shit. I mean, it looks nice. Nice brakes, even though it's on stock calipers. I mean, it, you know, probably all you need for the rears. The rears aren't too crazy. I have a guarantee he has some Wellwoods or something up front. Crazy drive system. Oh, my God. Look at that. That is very pretty. That is very pretty. It has nitrous, too. Wow. Awesome. Battery box, all nicely tucked and looks super clean. The wire management looks great. Civic, all-wheel drive. That's a sick sticker to have on. He has a battery kill switch right there. I don't know why you showed me the antenna delete. Stock seats, though. Ultimate sleeper? Question mark. I mean, maybe that's what he's going for. What did it make? 515 right here. Yeah, so it looks like max horsepower. Yeah, 5. My bad. Not 515. I'm dyslexic. 615. Max horsepower was 652 and uh, 650 and 5. God, I am dyslexic. 652 and 4. I am so dyslexic. 652 and 465 foot pounds of torque thank you i didn't used to be this dumb when i went through school like i was actually pretty smart in school but i can't read anymore i am not reading this i am not going to read that if you want to pause this and zoom in you can read it i'm still not going to read it even though you made it zoom in more oh look there's this whole build Fifty-seven thousand dollars. see it, it's not cheap building a honda if you do it right and then here's a video of it on dyno uh i'm not going to play the audio because it's going to blow out your ears and mine but you can imagine here i'll mimic it for you <laughs> sounded probably just like how it sounded Forty-five thousand. i mean that's a lot of money i wonder what he actually got for it i, I know the honda market is kind of crazy it's really weird because you have your really shitty two thousand dollar hondas and then you have your really clean examples that are heavily modified and they go for boatloads of money especially if they're done right especially if they're done right all-wheel drive 650 horsepower on an eg coupe well this has to be probably one of the most fun cars to drive like this this has to be it has to be it's totally corner balance weighted it, it's it's a 10 second quarter mile with the right driver like this is this is cool this is cool would i spend forty five thousand on it probably not i probably wouldn't but it is definitely um it is, it's up there it's worth money it's just that's a lot of money next car another one that's sold holy shit all these sold it 2006 honda s2000 convertibles this one sold twenty two thousand dollars first photo two we see a supercharger or a turbo i'm guessing it's a supercharger because it's right there in his belt drive it has over fourteen thousand dollars in mods it's very clean on the exterior rpf ones look very nice on it as well it's bright yellow craftwork supercharger bc coils renegade overflow if you want to read the rest of the shit you could it's pretty simple stuff but the big thing is the craftwork supercharger obviously it's a supercharged s2000 I mean, S2000s are already fun from the factory. I, in my opinion, it's just a better Miata. I think most people would agree with me, except for Miata owners. But whatever. They can't keep up anyways. But yeah, and then you go and you toss a supercharger on... What, what do these come with? The FA or whatever? And it's just... It's a million times better. Definitely probably less capable in the canyons and stuff like that. But the instant torque and the instant boost of a supercharger... If dialed in correctly and you're not over-pushing the car... Which is make it all the more fun. And you get cool supercharger sounds. The thing that like I don't like about turbos, especially for like canyon driving, is the lag. Like unless you have a small turbo that spools insanely quick, the lag in a canyon is just not nice. You, you get out of corners a lot more sluggish, you know. By the time you're in boost, you're about to start breaking again, depending on the canyon. I, I'm just not a huge fan of them. And they create a lot of heat. Superchargers, at least like this centrifugal right here, less heat, instant torque instant boost i mean it's kind of like the best of both worlds and it's not as torquey as like a twin screw so you're not gonna like overpower the rear end or like even the trans you're not gonna break anything on like light boost with one of these because they're not as violent so like this is like a great track and canyon setup right here he also has brand new tires and clutch although the tires didn't look that brand new i mean they look fairly new but i wouldn't say brand new they got life but you've probably put like 
a thousand miles on them. Anyways, what is he asking? Twenty-two thousand out of sixty-five thousand miles. That's pretty low. And I know S two thousand prices a while back were pretty crazy. I don't know what they are now. But a supercharged S two thousand for twenty-two thousand. That doesn't sound too far fetched for me. Especially with that low mileage and how clean it is. You know, if this thing was beat to shit, then maybe not. But it's really clean. Like, 10 out of 10. Like, a lot of people might disagree, but if he had a carbon hood on this, I think it would take away from it. I think the one color OEM Plus look just looks perfect. And it'll be super unassuming. Like, this thing will catch a snack pack sleeping on the freeway. Overall, I'd, I'd give this one a thumbs up. I think this is probably one of the more fun cars of the episode. Because although the other cars make a whole lot of power and are super rowdy, I guarantee they can't really be driven as hard as this one. Just out of experience, I know that my Mustang, which is the fastest car I own at the moment, I can't drive it like I could drive my other cars. So, although the other ones are probably really gnarly, this one is actually usable, and you can actually drive this one and have fun with. So, this one might be my favorite of the episode. And I think it looks the best. I mean, this EG looks good, this doesn't. This EK looks all right. This doesn't. So yeah, let me know your thoughts below though. Anyways, guys, that is all I got for you for today. Which one of your cars was the favorite? Comment it down below. Supermotor should be back in a couple weeks or so. We did run into a minor issue with the cams, but we'll be getting that sorted out ASAP. Anyways, thanks for watching. Subscribe. And until next video, peace.